keep your underwear on. So it's going to be about purity. Um, we heard about purpose this morning. We talked, we heard about repentance yesterday. I believe that God is wanting to take us into holiness and take us into purity for us to fulfill our purpose. And the title, you're going to see the word that comes in the scripture in just a moment. But I want to tell you, start out with the fact that purity is something that most of us desire too little and we desire it too late. Walking in purity is what God wants for us. We have the Holy Spirit who is holy and God wants us to live in purity. Um, I just finished a book called Single Ready to Mingle. It's going to be released in, uh, in the summer and it deals about dating. I hear a lot about relationships in the church. I preach a lot of sermons on relationships. We hear a lot about keeping your virginity, which is very important. But Bible doesn't talk a lot about dating, how to find your spouse, how to find Mr. Right. The Bible's emphasis is very huge on sexual purity because purity applies to your singleness and it applies to your married life. Purity applies to a teenager and purity applies to an adult. It applies to a son and it also applies to the father. It applies to a teenager and it applies to the pastor. Purity is not only to a person who is trying to get married and trying to keep their virginity because see purity is more than virginity. You can be a virgin and not be pure but you can't live in purity and not walk in virginity as a single person. I lost my virginity at the age of 24 on the wedding night to my wife. The greatest day in my life. Some of you just don't know what to do with that information. Absolutely do nothing. Just keep staring at me. <laughs> but that is the day you look forward to. And we keep our virginity so that we can lose it. To the right person at the right time. Right? But I can tell you one thing that when I got married and, and you know, we had that physical relationship and something that we continue, I wasn't living pure all my teenage years or all my even young adult years. Some of you know my testimony of how the Lord delivered me from the, from the demonic spirit of pornography. You can live in virginity as a young person and not walk in purity. In fact, some people use the holy V as a sense of pride, while in reality, the only thing that they have is the holy V, but there is no purity in their life at all. And so today, my message is not going to be just to keep your virginity, keep your physical purity. I want to talk about purity. I want to talk about how to live in purity here, how to live in purity in here. It is the will of God that you live pure life. It is the will of God that you live pure life before you get married and when you get married. The idea that once I get married, purity will not be necessary is extremely wrong. I cannot tell you how many people would reach out to me through social media and in personal contact who are married and who thought that once they get married, their purity life will be fixed when they will no longer need to restrain their urges for sex. Marriage doesn't fix purity. If it would, God wouldn't send the Holy Spirit to live in you. God will give you a ring. The Holy Spirit is the one that helps us to live holy. So I want you, we're going to look at a few verses right now to explain what purity is and then dive in into practically how to walk in purity. Psalm, Psalm 24 verse 4, it says this, who can ascend the hill of the Lord or who may stand in this holy place? He who has clean hands everybody say clean hands everybody look uh, wave your hands at me your hands both of your hands now clean hands everybody say clean hands and then it says after that pure heart point to your heart clean hands pure heart have you noticed it doesn't say pure hands it says clean hands so hands is something you can see, correct? A heart is something you cannot see, correct? So purity is not physical. Cleanness is physical. 
Purity is invisible. It's a heart issue. It's something you cannot see. Purity is not virginity. Virginity is clean hands. And God says, when you walk into my presence, I want your hands to be clean. It means I want you to have physical purity, physical cleanness, but that is not what the purity is. Purity is pure. Come on. So clean hands is something you can see. And pure heart is something nobody else can see. Let's look at one more verse, and that's in the New Testament. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 8, everybody knows it. Blessed are the what? Blessed are the what? For they shall see God. So God is saying that pure in heart. It's interesting, it doesn't say pure in the body. Meaning you can keep yourself clean. You can keep yourself from sexual connections. You can keep yourself even from dating and at the same time be perverted in the heart and in the mind. And the Bible doesn't say those who have virginity will see God. It says those who have purity in heart. The problem with the church folk is the church folk judge us based on our physical purity, physical cleanness, and they cannot see our inward and the heart purity. And therefore, you can remain a total pervert on the inside, but because you're a virgin and you're not sleeping around and you're not dating anybody that anybody can see in church, and if you are dating, you're doing so secretly that you don't post it on social media, that you can still walk around with a sense of pride and with the sense of godliness. When I was in the Ukraine, we lived there, we had this um, thing where my mom and my dad would have guests over. And the guests, you know how in Ukraine, they don't plan days in ahead. They just tell you, we're coming. So 15 minutes later, the mama and daddy would come. There was five of us. I'm the oldest of five. And she would tell us to do this. She would say, clean the house. So we had 15 minutes to clean the house. You, you can't clean the house in 15 minutes. You, you, you need five hours. The kind of mess we would make, we needed five hours to clean the house. But we had 15 minutes. So what we would do is what every Ukrainian teenager learned to do is we would take advantage of the space behind the couches and under the beds because that space is there for a reason. So we would take everything that was visible that you could see and we would quickly put it behind the couch. What didn't fit behind the couch went underneath of all the beds. Why? So that in 10 minutes when the guests would come in, they would see a clean house. But it only looked clean to them. We all knew. God forbid you look behind the couch. <laughs> see, purity is what's behind the couch. Cleanness is what people see. Purity is an inward issue. The emphasis that we place, and honestly, wrongly, I have been placing for a long time in my ministry, is on the cleanness. Make sure you look clean. Make sure that you change your status on Facebook. You're still saying that you're in a complicated relationship with that boyfriend. Change that to single. Make sure that you don't do this physically and you don't do that. And that's very important. Clean hands. God says clean hands. We need to have clean hands. But this is where I stop. And God talks about the place behind the couch, the pure heart. We're going to look at one more verse about purity. And then we're going to talk about how to walk in purity. Exodus chapter 28, verse 42 and 42, 43. And this is the verse that I got the title of the message for, Keep Your Underwear On. Exodus chapter 28 verse 42 says the following, And you shall make for them linen trousers to cover their nakedness. They shall reach from their waist to their, to their ties. And they shall be upon Aaron and his sons when they come into the tabernacle of meeting or when they come near the altar to minister in the holy place. That they do not incur iniquity and die. It shall be a statue forever to him and his descendants after him. When I was younger and I was reading this verse where it was saying God tells to Moses that I want you to make trousers. I did not understand what trousers meant. I thought it was some deep word for some kind of a spiritual activity. So when I saw trousers, I was like, amen. And waist down, I was like, praise God, the glory of God. And then I read a simple translation where it didn't use the word trousers. It says undergarments. And some translation says this, you should make them underwears. Ew. I was like, disgusting. I was flipped that page. I don't want to read about God talking about undies. 
to Moses say hey make sure Aaron wears underwear to, to church I mean imagine this that's in your Bible where God tells Aaron make, uh, Moses make sure Aaron and all of his sons when they come to worship make sure they have their underwear uh, God uh, okay all right all right any uh, God says and there's specific particular ones I want I want their height to be particular God is like, I don't want just any kind of underwear. I want a particular kind of underwear. Now, there, there's one thing about, um, can I borrow you? And I'll tell you the way, every illustration I use is to embarrass people, so you'll be embarrassed. Come over here. Come right here. Uh-huh, yeah. Underwear. You know what underwear is? It's something that's under what you wear. Very simple. Can I ask you a question right now? Do you think he wears an underwear or not? based on what you see take a picture of it so we can post it and Man. we don't know in fact now you you hope he does you believe he does you have really good faith but honestly nobody knows why because an underwear is something that you wear under what people see I want you to see this God tells priests you will dress outwardly something that people will see you will put the garment of righteousness you will put the garment of praise you will put the breastplate of righteousness you will play, put the shoes of this God says all of that is great and when you come to church people will say amen a man of God a woman of God you know look at how she worships look at her Bible has like yellow pink everywhere look she even has a notebook look I mean she takes photos of the quotes and posted a woman is a woman of God she posts every single day a photo from a different angle and puts a scripture in the bottom to inspire the world that's the only decision discipleship and evangelism she does but hey she's doing it for the glory of God and so you're looking on the outside you're like man this is awesome but see when God says when you come into my presence God is asking stay there God is asking one thing he says what's under all of that do you have an underwear meaning what's under what you present God tells Aaron if you show up in my presence I know if you got your undies on and if you don't have them on could you be kind to put us the verse again he says this he says they will incur iniquity and die for not because they didn't wear a garment it's because they did not wear an underwear in his presence you need purity to be in God's presence you need purity to be in God's presence and you need purity for relationships for those of you who one day will be married you will understand without purity your relationship with your wife is not going to be good and and many people want to live pure because they don't want to have hidden sin and and shame in front of their spouse but God in here says to Aaron and to his sons he says I want you to wear an underwear because I get offended when you come in and your stuff is not covered and to make the matters worse you know what he said this shall be a statue until the coming of Jesus Christ and after that I remove that no it does not say that if you look in the screen behind me it says this shall be a statue for him and his descendants forever meaning as the royal priesthood of the new testament God is still expecting you to wear an underwear in his presence now of course I'm not speaking about an underwear that you buy in Walmart I am talking about an area of our life that's hidden from the public eye an area of our life that's hidden from the news feed from the feed of our Instagram from the stories of our Instagram from the Facebook from the snapchat the areas of our life that are hidden that are under your wear the purity the life the private life right here and right here God says that life that purity is what I look at when you come into my presence. Purity is wearing your underwear in God's presence. Purity is taking care of your private, inward, thought life, emotion life, where nobody else can see it, where nobody can track it, where nobody can have an evidence against you but it's right here and it's right here and God says when you come into my presence you better wear an underwear meaning you better come in purity 
And purity is not that you don't have a boyfriend. Oh, I'm pure. Why? Because I'm not dating anybody. Oh, I'm pure. Why? Because I'm not sleeping. I'm pure. Why? I don't watch porn. I I'm pure. Why? Because I don't masturbate. I'm pure. Why? Because, you know what? I have not had a sexual encounter since the last time I broke up. And I've repented since. You know, that is great. That's clean hands. But that's not purity of heart. Purity of heart is what's happening here and what's happening right here. That's purity of heart. Thank you so much. Do you have an underwear on? No, don't sh <laughs> My God, have mercy. I just asked a simple question. Yes or no? Okay, praise God. Okay, well, but then, can I really take his full word for it? No. But we're not going to want for a check. This is between him and God. In other words, um, I can ask you, hey, are you living pure? Uh-huh. But in reality, only you and God knows that. Only you and God knows that. And that's what I want to talk about for just a few remaining of the moments is how to walk in that purity. This message, and I, I saw the moment I announced this, some, some older people got up and left, and which is fine. This, this purity message is not for the singles. It's for us as the men and women of God. And it applies to the married folk as much as it applies to the single folk. So let's open to Paul's instruction. I'm going to give you three simple points of how to walk in purity. And I believe the Holy Spirit is going to do something very special as we hear this brief message. And it will be easy to remember this verse. It's 2-2-22. 2, 2, 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 22. So four twos. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 22. Very simple. Can we read it together on the count of three on the screen behind me? One, two, three. Who messed up? You messed up? Oh, I did? Okay, so we're going to read it one more time because I messed it up. One, two, three. Amen, amen, amen. Put your hands together for yourself. You did an amazing job. Some of you who did not read the Bible today, you just did. That's your Bible reading plan for today. Hallelujah. Verse of the day. <laughs> My God. And so we're going to break this verse down into three simple parts and let this verse speak to us. The first thing that I want you to see in reaching purity is that Paul says to pursue peace, righteousness. So to pursue purity. Pursue. Pursue. So write this down if you're taking notes. Is that purity is not a point you cross. It's a pursuit an ongoing pursuit or pursuit after Jesus. Purity is not a point you reach. Oh, when I get married, then I'm pure. Oh, when, I'm, when I stop consuming pornography, I am pure. When I stop staring at girls' butts, then I'm pure. When I stop looking for ladies who are wearing yoga pants in the gym, I'm pure. The same thing can be applied to gross. When I stop doing this, then I'm pure. Purity is not a certain level you reach where you stop struggling. Paul doesn't say purity is a point. It's a constant, ongoing pursuit. When you stop pursuing, you stop purity. Even if you don't commit physical, sexual, immoral sins. Purity is not a point you reach. It's a pursuit after Jesus. So the goal is not to pursue purity. The goal is to pursue Jesus. And as you pursue Jesus, the purity becomes a result. My problem was, I got introduced to pornography at a very young age. I think I was about 12 years of age. It was the first time that in the Ukraine somebody showed black and white magazine photos. It was half of the page that was ripped off. I can't recall what I saw, but I just remember that I saw for the first time women who could not afford clothes. And I thought it was funny. I didn't think of anything sensual or sexual or arousing in it, except I knew that it was probably wrong. And I knew that if my dad finds out, I'm going to get a Ukrainian Holy Ghost Pentecostal spanking. 
So I hid those images like David hid uh, God's word in his heart. I hid them in my pocket and then I lost them somewhere and never thought anything about it until we moved to the United States and about six months into being in the United States and some of you heard my testimony and I'm just going to repeat it for those who have not heard it before. An American neighbor asked us to house his seven or eight cats and gave us a key, a uh, payment for seven days for us to take care of his house and as we were taking care of his house it was always a dream of mine to be able to see how white people live for those of you Caucasians please forgive me but that was 13 year old dream that I had okay my dream was to see what they have in their refrigerator I wanted to see what they have in their basement I wanted to see what they have in their shed outside and I wanted to see what they have in their closet. I wanted to see everything without them knowing I'm looking at it. So this was a perfect opportunity to see a fulfillment of my dream, having a keys to this guy's house for seven days, feeding his cats and guess what I did? I went everywhere. I checked under the bed, I checked behind. I was just this curious cat walking around checking every single thing and then I stumbled upon a closet, a bunch of VHS tapes with... Um, um, they were pornography tapes, but I convinced myself that it, it could have been, might have been, what if perhaps it's like um, Billy Graham's or Catherine Kuhlman's crusade tapes put in the wrong tape covers. I'm not lying to you. I actually had that thought circulating in my head and so I wanted to do just to check, double check. And so I put the tape in. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it was not a Catherine Kuhlman or Billy Graham's crusade. It was ungodly, wicked, horrible. I didn't stop, watched it felt really 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 nasty really horrible I felt like somebody put me in a pile of poop and kept me there for 40 minutes and it smelled good until you get out and then you're like it just it just just felt like I wanted to scrub stuff out of me just it was so disgusting and I said I'll never ever do it again only to do it again the next day only to do it again the next day the next day until uh, I was now praying and hoping that the neighbor will come back and take the keys away because I could not stop this was the day where we had no internet. The only internet we had is we had the AOL six month trial period. I don't know if you guys remember those. For those of you, yeah, and after the six months, you don't buy the internet, you buy, you get another CD, CD-ROM put for six months. So that was the day. This was the day where we, there was no television. My parents were so Pentecostal, we didn't even have a television uh, in our house. So this was the day where living pure was easier. And so after this encounter with the neighbor's house, I was like, my God, please forgive me. I'll never do it again only eight months later to find out like a drug addict addicted to drugs I found myself being addicted to consuming pornography it left me feeling dirty I was a disciplined man I thought I was a disciplined man I was disgusted with myself I hated myself I started to preach at that time already a young man I would go to my pastor for accountability and I'm going to share uh, my deliverance story in just a moment but in my mind I developed this thing that I was not pure I wasn't pure though I was a virgin I wasn't pure and in my mind I said this if God gives me freedom from pornography I will be pure so purity in my mind was this reaching a point where I no longer watch pornography and that's the problem that's not what purity is purity is not reaching a point where you don't do that sin that you do right now that's not purity Paul says to pursue meaning if you don't pursue it you can't walk in purity and even if you stop consuming pornography even if you stop sleeping with your boyfriend even if you repent of your lesbian lifestyle even if you walk away from sexual immorality you get married and you have an ongoing physical intimacy that doesn't guarantee purity if you park your devotional spiritual life in the garage of your religiosity and after I got delivered from pornography, I found out the battle with lust. The battle and the struggle here continued, but there was this sense of pride. I no longer watch this stuff, so I am good. But see, if you're not pursuing, you're not pure. Purity is not a point you reach. Purity is a pursuit after God. I want you to see this verse about Samuel in the first Samuel about Saul I'm sorry in the first Samuel chapter 15 verse 11 it says the following I greatly regret that I have set up Saul as a king 
for he has turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments. It grieved Samuel and he cried out to the Lord all night. Could you underline if you believe underlining your Bible is not a sin. What it says over there, he has not followed me. God didn't accuse Saul for not believing in him. He didn't accuse Saul for turning his back on the temple, sacrifices of the lambs. He says, you know, Sam, Saul used to be, follow me. Everywhere I was, he followed me. I go right. He goes, I'm sorry, camera people. He goes right. I go left. I go to uncomfortable places and, and Saul used to do exactly that. He go right behind me, right behind me, right behind me, right behind me. He goes right behind me everywhere I went. And then something happened, sit over there. He arrived. Listen, he arrived. I go, he's sitting. He's not doing anything bad. He's not following, meaning there's no more pursuit. He parked on the side of his particular breakthrough. For Saul, it was he became a king. For you, is you beat that addiction. And then this is what it says. I want you to see the scripture. It says, when he stopped following me, he says, and has not performed my commandments. Anytime you park at the particular level with your walk with God, you start compromising physically. It always happens. It's a matter of time. For Saul, he started disobeying God in that area, in that area. Why? Because the pursuit is the only thing that keeps me in purity. So the root of my purity is the pursuit of God. The result of my pursuit of God is pure lifestyle. Are you comprehended with what I'm saying? You can come back. Thank you. Start following again. My God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So the first thing that I wanted to share with you guys today about purity is the point, it's not a, it's not a point you reach. You, you don't park at a particular time or a particular, because I find people who, when they are needing to be free from a particular sin, they are pursuing God, they're desperate. And then when you reach the freedom from that sin, there becomes this complacent parking where you sit down, where you park at that freedom and you say, you know what? I am good, I arrived. But that's not what purity is. That's what freedom is. That's not what purity is. What purity is, is a constant pursuit. So if you got free from that addiction, if you got delivered from that, God says the same way you were pursuing me where you were addicted, continue to pursue me. Otherwise, some other addiction will slip you back in and you will not be performing my commandments because you're not pursuing me purity is the pursuit somebody say amen if you write things down write this down we need purity to be in God's presence and we need God's presence to live pure we need purity to be in God's presence and we need God's presence to be pure the fruit of the Holy Spirit is self-control it doesn't say it's the work of the Holy Spirit it's the fruit Fruits, I, I see how my trees in the backyard produce fruit. There is no sweating. There is no child, like, you know, like. <sighs> oh, so hard. Oh, yeah. No. You, you don't see striving. You see yielding. Trees naturally produce. The Holy Spirit is saying this, is that if you make it your goal to pursue me, without striving without purity self-control all those things will begin to come natural effortlessly the only effort you have to put in is to run after him so all their effort is not to be free is to run when you put the effort to run God says I put the effort to bring purity that even when you free I bring deeper levels of purity with every season of your life because being free is not God's goal God's goal is purity of heart you can be free but not walk in purity and that's why some of us what happens is that we walk in freedom and we think well I beat this sin I beat that addiction I no longer struggle with that but at the same time the purity of heart is deeper than that and you can't do that by trying to make yourself pure you can only do that by putting an effort to pursue and God says now that you put in the time to pursue I'm not talking about just showing up to church I am not talking about having a version Bible app pop a verse in the morning and I read one verse I'm now fed with God you know what I'm not like pleasantly plumb but I need more than a crumb to get me fed 
oh I just pray I turn on my favorite K love song on my way to work and those 10 minutes while I'm eating my burrito from Taco Bell and I'm also putting on my makeup and I'm spending my time with God now that is a great thing that you have going with the Lord I applaud you but that looks more to me like being parked in the garage than pursuing you got to pursue the Lord you got to pursue the Holy Spirit if you want to live in purity number two if we look at the verse again in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 22 it says flee youthful lust but pursue so the second thing that I want you to write this down is that we are not called to fight lust but to flee it God didn't anoint us to fight lust he only called us to flee lust he called you and I to fight Satan but not lust I find it interesting that the Bible nowhere says for us to fight lust it always says to flee lust but to fight the devil can I tell you something lust is stronger than the devil you can beat the devil you can't beat lust the only way you beat lust is run from it at the same time as you're running from God you're running from the from lust you're never called to run from the devil you're called to run from lust because lust is bigger than the devil why is lust worse than the devil it's because it connects to something inside of you called flesh and so God says through Paul to my generation he says it to me he says it to you he says this he doesn't say fight he says run from it ah, I don't want to run from it I can beat it that's your problem I cannot tell you how many young men have come up and say pastor Vlad pray for me why I'm fighting with lust and, I said, and that's the problem stop fighting I said where in the Bible did you see God called you to fight with lust that is why you're losing because you're picking a fight with an enemy God thinks you can't win and you're asking me to help you win when God says you can't I was like I can't pray for you to fight lust I can only pray for you to obey the Bible and flee lust you nowhere see Joseph fighting Potiphar's wife he didn't try to evangelize to her because if he would try to evangelize to her both of them would go to lake of fire you don't see uh, Joseph laying hands on her and casting out a spirit of harlotry out of her Joseph goes into the house and the moment the chica start giving him those dirty looks and she's been doing it for a very long time he looked at that and he kept on walking he pretty much started ignoring her and she grabbed on him and he what did he do he didn't say come over here I know your daddy didn't love you let me pour some love of the father you know what you know woman what you need you just need love like you're fishing for lust you never had an actually somebody loved you your husband hasn't been paying attention to you you know he, let me just, just just right here on my shoulder no Joseph ran from her I'm gonna give you practical things now on how to flee lust underneath of this point write down a cut off the hand which in other words means remove trigger points in your life cut off the hand what I mean by fleeing lust is this is that there are things in our life that are trigger points for lust that they need to be simply cut off Jesus says if your hand causes you to sin what did he say he didn't say bring it to an altar call he did not say have the pastor pray for your hand what did Jesus say but my hand is also used to help people it's only sinning on one day out of the month the rest of the 29 days it's doing good I need God to change my hand and this is the problem is that we're not fleeing situations where on good days are good it's just on the weekdays they're pulling us into sin Potiphar's wife is not always lustful and horny should have not said that word sorry bleep that out Potiphar's wife is not always like that she's a nice woman she just has those days where she acts too like this I can't just run from her and this is what I find with people you need to identify your hand that causes you to sin for some of you it's very simple it's your Instagram 
but half of the other time that you don't fall into sin Instagram is good you fellowship with other people you even brought people to church because of that and so what you're doing is that Lord sanctify my Instagram because it's using good things and God's idea for you to flee lust is for you to remove even if it's doing good things for you on good days so this is what we do instead of cutting off the hand which is what God says we come up and say Lord deliver me I have people that come up all the time and say, Pastor Vlad, pray for me because I'm battling with lust. My response is that you shouldn't be battling, you should be fleeing. Okay, pray for me to help me to flee lust. Second question I ask is this, which hand are we cutting today? <laughs> oh no, Pastor, I'm going to keep all my hands, all my feet and all my fingers. And I say, you can't receive freedom from lust without something being removed. What's being removed? Well, 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 uh, what's being removed? No, it's just all in my heart. That's the, Jesus did not say cut your heart. He says cut a trigger point. There is trigger points for lust. For some people the trigger point is simple. It's at night they relax. I believe a single person, a person who is not married should not have free time. I believe when you say free time, devil says my time. For the single unmarried people, especially young men, free time in the evening to relax is demonic time. You should stay as busy as you possibly can. Did you know why Joseph didn't commit sin with Potiphar's wife? He was busy in the house. Did you know why David fell in with sin with Bathsheba? It's because David got up in the evening on the balcony after he slept all day. And instead of fighting, he was relaxing and that's why Satan got him. He couldn't get Joseph like that. So remove free time. Well, so what do you want me to do? Never have a free time? Nope. You've been singing to Jesus. You gave him your whole, your whole life. It's not yours. So what do you do with free time? You read, you write, you stay away from free time because that's your trigger point. What else is your trigger point? Could it be Snapchat? What else it could be? Could be internet. But I can't believe you would say for me to turn off my internet until God brings that deliverance. I can't live without internet. Well, then you need to make a decision. Do you want to live in sin or do you want to live in freedom? But I want to live free without internet. I want to live free, I'm sorry, with the internet. Jesus did not have internet, he survived. You will be just fine. I use it for my homework. Stop lying to yourself. You don't even go to school. I do research. What research do you do? I need to stay current with the news. The news is very simple. There's a whole thing going on in the government. Donald Trump is the president and everybody hates him. That's about the news for the next two years. I just described it to you. Well, I need to stay. I need to stay. See, you have to ask yourself a question. If you are serious about fleeing, then you have to be serious about removing a hand. I remember I was free already. And a few years ago, I start getting, I start sensing that I'm being tempted with Instagram. There's a popular page on Instagram, you know, where like you click in between the buttons over there and it puts just different random pictures. And I started to, in my free time, look through, scroll through the Instagram, just to numb the fact that I was busy with other stuff and scrolling through. But deep inside, my flesh was looking for this. It was looking for skin. I know what it was looking for. I know what I was scrolling for. I wasn't clicking on anything, but I was hoping to see something. I'm a married man and I'm a pastor but nobody can see that this continued for a few weeks I didn't look at it but I just kept scrolling hoping my flesh was hoping to find skin and until I realized I'm coming to the edge of the cliff already and I'm beginning to sense the same temptations that I experienced when I was in bondage but my justification is this I'm not committing sin I'm not looking at anything and I am chilling and so, and then I told my wife about it. A lot of times husbands come and say, I struggle with lust. And I said, tell your wife, she'll deliver you. <laughs> oh no, she'll kill me. I was like, that's what I mean by delivering you. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I can tell anybody except my wife. But I knew I had to tell my wife. And the reason why I had to tell her is because a few days before that, she started to say this. She's like, something is wrong with, with us. I said, everything is fine. I take you on a date. You're a happy woman. You got everything that you need. But secretly already, I know something is happening there. And, and these women, they have this like Holy Ghost antennas. They know everything that's wrong. You can cover it, delete the browser history, everything. And she comes in. She's like, I just, I just feel like we're not close. And you're like putting balonies on her. Like, oh, we're just so amazing. I booked a vacation. I bought a ring for you. And I cleaned your car and everything. And the woman's like, nope, that's not going to cut it. You're doing something wrong. 
And my wife, you know, she's not a prophetess, but she was just kind of complaining about something was going on. I remember it was Friday night. We're about to go to sleep and I can't sleep. And the Holy Spirit said, Vlad, if you don't tell your wife, you're going to fall back into pornography tomorrow. He said, you're coming, you're playing games already. You're coming close and you are doing what's wrong. It was about a few years ago. So I tell her and I'm expecting like, <laughs> you know, and I would deserve, I mean, because it would help me maybe to be delivered from that. <laughs> and so my wife, she, she did not do that. She, um, she got on her, like she sat down in the bed and she laid hands on me <laughs> and um, I was delivered. Like she didn't beat me praise be to God she prayed for me she put I remember it was like holy I've never had this happen it was like, it's like Lord I just pray you will deliver this wicked perverted person <laughs> she didn't say it like that she didn't say it like that she just said kind words after she prayed I said I'm turning off Instagram and for about 12 months I removed Instagram completely didn't log in one time even though I felt delivered I knew one thing the devil has me on the hook but the problem with Instagram is that I was getting good followers. Like I was really hoping to break 5,000 followers and I was this close and I am free already. Why do I need to turn off my Instagram? My hand is good. But see, you have to understand, it's good on good days. If it's a tool in the hands of the devil on the bad days, that means the good and the bad has to go. And this is where a lot of us are saying, huh. I don't think I agree with you. Keep living in sin. Stop, you know what? Stop asking God to deliver you if you're not obedient to his word. Stop asking, stop coming to the altar and saying, Lord, do this. Jesus said clearly, if you want to be free from lust, he did not say, have pastor pray for you. He did not say, have anointed man put his hand on your head and for you to fall under the power of God and say, no, 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 no. Then you get up and you keep using exactly the same trigger point. If you want to flee from lust, that means you have to remove trigger points. What is your trigger point? Identify it and remove it. The second part about fleeing lust, that's not just the trigger points, don't eat of the tree. Meaning there are certain things you can't remove. You just have to not look at and discipline your eyes not to look at. For example, God didn't call you to remove Victoria who has no secrets from the mall. You can't, you know, I, so I know some of you, you really want to change your city and you want to change all of that. But in reality, you're going to fail in that. You can't remove that. If you're working out and you're going to the gym, you know, you're not going to go to every single girl and say, hey, could you next time wear something a little bit more baggier? You can't go to every single girl in church and say, hey, could you please wear a skirt a little bit longer and you know, like this part, a little bit closer. God gave you clothes to cover, not to reveal. Didn't your mama tell you that, you know, and all this stuff. You, you can't do that because that's not practical. There are things in life that will be trigger points that you cannot remove. It's out of your control. In that case, you have to do that, what God told Adam to do with the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Don't eat of it. Meaning, don't stare. If the girl is not dressed up like he's supposed to dress up, bounce your eyes. If Victoria has no more secrets, keep walking in the mall. Don't look at her. If you are in the gym and somebody's right in front of you and, and they really are showing, you know, other parts of their body that have been working out for very much, just bounce your eyes. God says the simple, thing, don't look at it. If you're like Samson, you're not going to control your eyes, you're going to lose them. The enemy is going to take it. Now for the ladies, this applies also, I know from, there's a lot of, there's a surge of lust that went in with the young women in our generation today, where now the addiction to pornography is actually coming close to the addiction that men have to pornography. Uh, if you can lower it down just a little bit. I know you're trying to tell me that it's my time and I appreciate that. And so, but what I would encourage you ladies is this is also, is for you, lust is something different. It could be maybe in the form of lusting to have somebody else's body, to be like somebody else. I remember I met a pastor, a good friend of mine, a good teacher, and, and I asked him something about social media and he says, you know Vlad, me and my wife, we walked away completely from, from Instagram and, and, and I said, you know, why did your wife uh, left Instagram? She said, it brought so much depression and anxiety to her, trying to compare her real life to everybody else's fake life. He says, she, though she's beautiful, she just couldn't live with that and she's just trying to live up to everybody's 
beautiful, cool looking, you know, with filters family and she decided to completely walk away from that saying, you know what, that's the tree that our generation has, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, the tree of Instagram and I'm not eating of that, that's not going to be a part of my life. And maybe that's the, tr that's the thing that you have to take where you have to run from things that bring you this, this food of the devil and you can't remove the tree, you just have to remove yourself from digesting it. There, there are so many trigger points all around in our generation today that will be begging for your attention and some things you cannot remove. They're going to be there no matter what. You have to discipline your eyes, that you move your eyes, that you, you move your heart from it. Another part about how to walk from that is not only we cut off the hand, not only we don't eat from the tree and we're bringing this to the close, is that if you don't want to want to fall into sexual sin, stop flirting with that sin. And stop flirting, meaning is this, is that we stop asking a question, how close can I get to the cliff without falling into it? And honestly, I just shared with you my story that happened to me a few years ago. And my excuse was this, is how close can I get to looking at stuff that without falling into looking at pornography? And that's a problem is that when you start flirting, you will fall. I love the fact that Joseph did not ask, you know what, sleeping with Potiphar's wife is a really bad idea. But flirting with her, chatting with her, direct messaging her, sending her emojis is not a bad idea. A lot of us, the problem why we fall into sexual sin is because we don't flee. Instead of fleeing sexual sin, we flirt. Meaning, we flirt with situations, we flirt with people knowing we're not called to be in that relationship. You have no business as a young man messaging a young lady in your church in a casual way. Would you still do that if you would have a wife? No, that means that has to stop today. Oh, you're Snapchatting and send, sending snaps to that person. Would you do that if you would have a wife today? No. Did you know that the Bible says blessed is the man who finds a wife? It doesn't say blessed is the man who finds a girlfriend. Meaning she's been acting like a wife before she became a wife. Act like a husband. Act like a wife before you become one. Stay away from flirting with people, flirting with situations and pushing your limits as close to the cliff as you can without committing the sin that will condemn you to hell. And that's called fleeing. I love Joseph and Joseph drives me like crazy because I look at this guy and I'm like, my God, he got rejected, he got bullied, he got abused. This guy has a death certificate laying at home. He is dead to his family. He has no church. He has no accountability partner. He has no pastor. He has no Bible. He has no church services. Yet when sexual temptation presents to a man who had the same biological body that you and I have, he doesn't flirt, he flees. We have a church, we have accountability, we have teachings and purity, we have parents, we have everything and we flirt with sin. And why is that? And I find two things that are different between Joseph and my generation. One is Joseph told the Potiphar's wife this. She says, I cannot do this great wickedness before God. We call sexual sin great weakness. I have a weakness, brother. Joseph didn't see sexual sin as weakness. He saw it as wickedness. We call it defeat. Joseph called it disobedience. That means sexual sin has to be redefined in your mind. It's not a weakness. Weakness is if you can't lift 300 pounds. That's a weakness. Weakness is something physical. Weakness is not consuming pornography. That's not a weakness. That's wickedness. And Joseph didn't see sleeping with somebody's wife as a weakness. He saw it as a wickedness. If you want to overcome sexual sin, you have to stop redefining sin as the world sees it and you have to say it it's not a mistake mistake is if you forgot my number that's a mistake mistake is not if you're staring at somebody's butt that's a sin that's willful deliberate joyful sin and when you start seeing it like that then you approach it with repentance instead of i'm working on it i can't lift two plates in the gym i'm working on it that's my weakness but that is the gym. The purity is not like that. If you are, I'm not walking in purity, God doesn't see it like I can't live to place. God says, you are a wicked sinner. And the, the response to that is, Lord, I'll repent. But if you see your sexual sin as a weakness, guess what you're going to do with it? You're going to work on it instead of repent. Another thing that I see in Joseph that's different than, than us is that Joseph, he fled because he had a fear of God. We flirt because we know the grace of God. Joseph fled because he had a fear of God. We flirt because we know the grace of God. 
the grace is with God loves you no matter what and that's the problem how come he had no anointing and he ran from sexual sin and we have a generation today trapped in sexual sin because we're loaded with the grace of God and this little of the fear of God are you comprehending and lastly so the first thing we mentioned purity is not a point it's a pursuit secondly we mentioned is if in order to win we have to flee not fight means you have to run from situations that are wicked you have to cut yourself away from people that are wrong you have to remove all of that and lastly what I'm going to share with you and we're going to pray second Timothy chapter 2 verse 22 it says this it says flee youthful lust pursue righteousness peace and joy and all of this stuff and then there's this one phrase would you be kind to give me that verse one more time Adita second Timothy chapter 2 verse 22 it says the following is that but pursue righteousness faith love peace and I want you to see this part it says with those who call on the name of the Lord out of the pure heart so my third and last and I believe the most important thing to walk in purity and that is this purity must be pursued in a community no community no purity Paul tells Timothy if you want to live in purity flee pursue and then he says this with those who are calling on the Lord from a pure heart that means you, you cannot be pure in a vacuum you cannot be pure on your own you need others Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 it says that before you seek and run after God it says surround yourself with a cloud of witnesses I like to say it like this your crowd creates a cloud over your life because this is what your friends do to you friends provide influence influence everybody say influence have you noticed when you said word influence in the word influence is three letter word that says flu you know how influence works like a flu you catch it when somebody else has it and they're around you when you are around people who are in lust and they are your friends you catch spirit of lust the same way you catch a flu simply by being around them Paul says you want to walk in purity he says you cannot do it because purity and lust are contagious you put yourself in a group of people who are in purity and it's a matter of time purity begins to come upon you because your crowd creates your cloud there's a spiritual influence that comes upon you your tribe creates your vibe the vibes you feel inside is all created by the tribe you have the scripture says this good habits are corrupted it says this do not be misled bad company corrupts good habits meaning if you have good habits bad company they will be corrupted your mama and daddy might have raised you up and said this is the right way to do it I always tell parents this don't pray for your kids pray for your kids friends everything you planted in them their friends will destroy it good habits meaning you build those habits for years mama told you daddy told you you put yourself in a bad environment few years and one thing that environment does it works like a flu you catch it you don't have a flu but because you're open to the influ influ influence of your friends you catch the cussing you catch the drinking you catch the lying you catch the cheating you catch the crush having a crush on your boyfriend you had you catch everything like a flu and good habits good morals that your mom or your daddy gave you are being destroyed because you're surrounded with people and that's why Paul says to Timothy flee lust pursue purity with with the right people are you with me David had the oldest son his name was Amnon Amnon was his oldest son this guy was supposed to be the next king instead of Solomon and one day Amnon has a crush on his half-sister Tamar meaning he wasn't supposed to like her let's just put it in our in our vocabulary he liked somebody God says you, he shouldn't be liking like non-christian let's just put it like that and he liked her so much he became sick you know when it's lust if it makes you sick <laughs> love makes you healthy usually he becomes sick and his friend comes to him and says amigo what's going on I see you're sick you're not eating 
And he says this, he said, I'm in love with Tamar. And watch this, his friend tells him, I have a solution for you. You tell your dad that you're sick. Don't tell him the truth that you love Tamar. Just tell him you have a fever. Have Tamar come and cook. Get all the servants out. And when Tamar cooks in front of you, do with her as you desire. And Amnon has no brains. Why? Because anytime you have friends that influences you, you always lose your brains. Always. That's how, uh, that's how it works. Your friends, they influence you and you stop thinking for yourself because that's the power of friendships. That's why Paul says, surround yourself with people who are right. So they'll influence you in the right way and you lose your brain in a good way. And Amnon does exactly what his stupid, wicked, demonic friend told him. His dad comes and instead of telling dad, you know what dad, um, I got a lust problem. Can you pray for me? He lies to his mentors but exposes his to his friends. His mentor, his dad could have prayed the demon out of him but his friend counseled him into his funeral. Rapes Tamar, hates Tamar, a few years later he dies, never becomes a king. Everything God had planned for him was destroyed. It wasn't because he had a lust problem. It's because he had the wrong friends who didn't deal with his lust correctly. You can have a problem with lust. Put yourself in the right group of people and I'm telling you, lust will no longer be a problem. You can have a... You can have purity. Put yourself in a group of wrong people and your purity is no longer gonna be there. Amen. Thank you for watching this content. I know this was a blessing to you. We would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell on our channel so that each time we upload something, you can be notified. Don't forget to share this content with your friends and family and on social media. We're so thankful to you. Better is not good enough. The best is yet to come.